After that defeat to Atletico Madrid, it was a while ago. It was a while ago. What, 18 days between that game against Atletico Madrid and tomorrow night's game against Leicester City. It's been all about Manchester United's search for a new manager. Will it be Poch? Will it be Ten Hag? Right now, we still don't have an answer to that. But we need to talk about our game coming up tomorrow. In my opinion, I think United have got about a 10% chance of getting into the top four this year. Arsenal have got their asses have got to fall out. And Arteta's just one manager of the month for February. Spurs have got to really have a bad run to the end of the season. And United have got to win all our games, including away at Liverpool and away at Arsenal. And we play in a Chelsea, the second last game of the season. It's, it's not all lost yet, but it definitely will be if we don't win on Saturday. So this video, I'm going to run through the game, run through the starting 11 that we started against Atletico Madrid and what changes I think we will see. Because with Ten Hag and Poch watching, these players have got to turn up at some point. Or will they? I don't know. You can let me know what you think in the comments below. Before we do get into it, just one quick plug here. If you are new to the channel, welcome to United People's TV. Please consider going down there, hitting the subscribe button, hit the notification bell as well. You get a ping every time I go live with the video. But yeah, as I said there, Poch and Ten Hag is going to be one of those two that's going to be managing Manchester United next season, in my opinion. I've held that opinion for a long time. So these players have got to start playing at some point, right? But also in saying that, we're already out of the Champions League. If we were going to start playing, we would have done it in that game against Atletico Madrid. Instead, we sort of self felt sorry for ourselves. The frustration came out. The bad sides of Bruno Fernandes' game and, and Ronaldo's with the shoulder shrugs and that everything's going wrong for us. You know what Atletico Madrid are going to do. And they did it. They did it very well. And this was a team that started there against Atletico Madrid. Now, I'll be completely honest in saying I'm not expecting there to be much change from that team there to the team that we see face Leicester on Saturday night. One big bonus for Manchester United, Jamie Vardy's out of the game because Leicester, they've got a pretty damn good recent record against United, don't they? Uh, so going into the game uh, in that regard, not very good, but without Jamie Vardy, that helps Manchester United. I don't think Ndidi's going to be there. I think he's out for the season as well. But Leicester are a mid-table mid team. We we're having a rough season. We're on 50-odd points, I think. 50. I think Leicester are on 36. They're about 10th in the table. I'm very glad, I'll be honest, that the Brendan Rodgers slump happened when it did because it ruled him out of the running straight away. And I didn't really want Brendan Rodgers. I felt it would have been a bit of a Moyes part two. I'm sure he would have been better than Moyes, but it would not have taken us up to that top table again. We all knew that. Everybody knew that. Yet still, he was being considered, apparently, as an option at one point. But looking at this team here, I don't think De Gea gets changed out for Henderson. I think De Gea is just going to keep his spot there. But as I said, I just, uh, who am I kidding? I don't think these players really are going to turn it on now if they haven't already turned it on this season. We're out of the FA Cup. We're out of the League Cup. We're way outsiders for the top four finish. And we're out of the Champions League. So the only thing really that this team has got to play for this season is a bit of pride. I don't think they've got that much, if I'm being completely and brutally honest. And as I said, to try and impress the new incoming manager. Uh, because in times, like, it's very easy to play well when you're winning. But when you're not playing well and your backs are against the wall, that's when characters come through. That's when leaders come to the fore and sort of inspire. Hopefully we can see a really inspirational performance from Bruno Fernandes. You know, Bruno's just signed his new contract. Let me pull a picture up of that because I was happy about it. I, I, for, the, for the life of me, it really sort of surprised me. And it still does. The amount of United fans who like throwing scorn towards Bruno Fernandes, given the fact that he's just he's been our best player this season. I think we can argue that. He's just signed a new contract now until 2026. We're lucky to have him here, even if he's got his flaws. And yeah, he's got his flaws, man. But Bruno Fernandes, I'm hoping we can see a top tier Bruno Fernandes performance against Leicester on Saturday. I think we'll play, we'll operate in a very similar style. I don't think there's going to be any massive tactical changes. Will we play two in midfield or will we switch back to playing McTominay as the holding six and go for two number, number eights? If we're being honest, the best football we've probably seen this season has been when we played in this formation. Sancho and Elanga holding a little bit wider. Of course, it does leave Cristiano Ronaldo isolated. But in these sorts of areas, that's where Bruno plays well because he can he can be up next to uh, Ronaldo when he needs to be. And he doesn't leave too much of a gap here because Sancho can tuck in if he needs to. Or Tellez, if he wants to, can sort of come up and cover that space. 
Whereas if Bruno's playing as the, if we're playing, for example, with Fred there and McTominay there as the two number sixes and Bruno as the sole number eight, that means that when Bruno leaves that position there and starts going up to cover and work alongside Bruno as a supporting striker, striker, then he leaves all of that space there. It doesn't suit Bruno to play really in a system that much, in my, in my opinion anyway, where he's the sole number eight, which might be a little bit of a worry considering if we're looking at Eric Ten Hag, that's a very much a Ten Hag style of play. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. But I would imagine we'll probably see a bit more of this. We're at home. It's against Leicester. They're a mid-table team now. They're a fashionable Crystal Palace, if you want to call it that. Fred and Bruno operating as the two number eights, going forward, doing what they do. You know, Fred is a good footballer. We saw like peak Brazilian Fred against Atletico Madrid. Hopefully we see that again today, but actually we turn it into a win. But it's just, I feel a bit, I don't know, ap apathetic. Is that the right way? Is that the right, right word to describe it? I'm just a bit meh about this game. Ronaldo, will we see him bag another hat trick? I'm sure it'd be lovely if we did. I'm excited to see this bloke, for sure. Jaden Sancho, hasn't he? Hasn't he massively come on this season? It, it, doesn't really matter what's going on. I think he'll play very well. Now, of course, a major, 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 major. I don't know what I just did there. Um, <laughs> Maguire, right? He had a decent enough um, international break with England. Got booed. But I think Maguire will start there. Varane, uh, there were injury concerns about Varane. Uh, and then he played 80 minutes in the second game for France during the international break. I think Maguire will start. I think Varane will start. Paul Pogba. He's leaving at the end of the season. The season's kind of over. I said it would be good to play Paul Pogba. I said if Manchester United are a better team between now and the end of the season with Paul Pogba in, then play Paul Pogba. Given the season's already basically dead and buried, I'd say sod that. Pogba's leaving. Although I would still kind of hold my... If we win at the weekend and Arsenal drop points, then maybe it can... As I said, but if we're looking at our fixtures, right? Our fixtures... They're not good. I, I ran through them in the live stream this morning. I'll, I'll run, through, run through them again now because everybody's talking about this game that's coming up against Arsenal, right? This game against Arsenal could be, you know, it's a six-pointer. But the, the season might be dead and buried by that point already because of the fixtures we're playing before we even go and face Arsenal. Let's go over here. Let's have a look at the fixtures. We've got Leicester on Saturday night there. And then we've got Everton away. Now, on paper, you might look at that as a sort of a game where Manchester United should be winning, but Everton are going to be stuck in a relegation scrap, and Goodison Park's not been a good place for United. It really hasn't. Norwich at home, again, you should be backing United completely to win that, but Norwich are in a relegation scrap. I wouldn't put either of those two games as bankers. And then we play Liverpool away before we play Arsenal. So we play two relegation candidates and a title candidate after we play Leicester. Out of all the games, Leicester seems like the most straightforward on paper, which probably means we're going to go and draw. And if we go and draw, that's probably literally season over. I, do, I personally think I would play, play the exact same starting 11. I'm not sure. Maybe I'll put Luke Shaw in there. Why not? Let's put Luke Shaw in there for absolutely no reason other than the fact that he scored a goal for England during the international break. Shaw and Maguire look better playing for England than they do playing for United. That's kind of been the case all season long, hasn't it, really? They were incredible. Both of them got into the team of the tournament at Euro 2020. And they just seem... I mean, Luke Shaw talked about it. Oh, yeah, it's just we feel more loved in the England environment. More loved. Come on, man. Uh, I, I know there's, there's, there's pressures that come of being a professional footballer, but the players can't truly expect the fans to be on their side when we see so many times this season the players just not putting a shift in. That's all you've got to do to have fans on your side. Just put a shift in. If you lose, you go, well, the, well we, did, we did everything we could. There's not been many or any games this season where United fans can truly say after watching United play, that we actually did everything we possibly could. Now, I think that we're going to be putting out that team. As I said, the exact same team that we played against uh, Atletico, Bar, Luke Shaw coming in for Alex Tellez down there. We're looking at players to make the difference. We're probably looking at this side here. We're probably looking at those three. Shaw, Sancho and Bruno. And will Ronaldo score? Well, Ronaldo can score. Ronaldo's had a bit of a break, but then he played with Portugal, played twice. Bruno obviously bagging two against North Macedonia uh, to get them through to the World Cup. I love Bruno. I want to see Bruno put in a proper captain's performance without the armband because, in my opinion, he should be captain and I hope that changes very soon. Now that he's committed his future to the club, give him the armband. 
take it away from Harry Maguire. I've had enough of it. Maguire can't handle the pressure. Even if it breaks him as a footballer at Manchester United, it doesn't matter. He's broken at the moment anyway. Something needs to change for this team. Now, will the players, as I say, will the players all of a sudden turn up because all of a sudden there's different sets of eyes watching them? They need to earn their place in the new team that's going to happen under Poch or Ten Hag. Or do you think it's a little bit too late, given that the season's already over. You let me know what you think in the comments below. As always, make sure you drop a like on the video. I'll be here with my match reaction tomorrow, Saturday evening, half five kickoff. Nothing but three points will do. Do we trust the United to get three points, though?